KO came into the Valorant roster with an incredible amount of hype and huge expectations. The early leaks about his utility were insane, and most people thought that he might in fact be overpowered. So yeah, about that, what happened? Why does no one play him anymore? What is going on Pro Guides family? It is your host Sergeant Frost, and today we're going to be talking about KO. We all remember how hyped his release was, and how all the pros thought he would be an insane addition to the game. He had a unique new mechanic and he was able to counter utility as a whole, but as the months have passed since KO's release, it seems no one cares anymore, and he barely gets touched at all. So let's take a look at why KO has fallen out of the meta, and what hurts his viability. His most noticeable and by far most unique ability is his knife, Zero Point. His suppression blade, as Valorant calls it, has the ability to stick to the first surface it hits, winding up shortly, and then denying anyone in its range their abilities for 8 seconds. While it does sound good on paper, in reality it's quite hard to utilize. The idea of the knife, with KO being an initiator, is to use it aggressively to take map control both on attack and defense. Theoretically, tossing a knife at an entrance can secure you a lot of space. You can have a jet dash in, and you can use Breach and Sky to support the push. You won't even have to worry about your opponents using utility themselves. But if you've played ranked enough, you probably also realize that this scenario doesn't happen very often, and rarely pans out the way you expect it to. Reasons for this include coordination being kind of hard to pull off in a ranked game, as well as the realization that preventing utility doesn't quite enable these plays as much as a flash or other utility can. So what a lot of KO players end up doing in ranked is just using the knife as a stalling or info gathering tool. But there's also shortcomings to this as well. It does neither of these things very well. First of all, the knife stalling capabilities aren't very strong by itself. If you use it to prevent a rush, the enemies are still able to swing without any issues, whereas stalling abilities like mollies, smokes, and slows are all able to give the person holding that area a considerable advantage. If anything, the knife is just a slap on the wrist that only becomes significant when used in addition to traditional stalling utility. Running into a cypher sight is already scary, but when KO strips you of your utility, you'll definitely end up changing your mind, at least for the 8 seconds that you're suppressed. But if you're suppressed and you know that there's no utility on site to stop you, then you just need to swing out and rely on your gunplay, which in some cases might be better anyways. On the information gathering end, the knife can consistently gather info, but leaves it up to you to figure out how to take advantage of it. Perhaps a bit of this issue comes with people not knowing how to use the information to its max potential, but as it stands, it's hard to utilize the information even though it comes in a nice graphical UI on the side. The only times where the information is particularly useful is to cancel a take if you end up pinging 3 players on site, but that also means you can't use it to aggressively take control. Compare this to a recon dart from Sova, where you're able to act upon pinging a player. Sova's Recon Dart definitely has a higher potential, and is easier to use without clear coordination, meaning it's a lot more valuable in ranked. You can use the dart to spam people through walls, boxes, and smokes, and you can even combo it with your ultimate. There's no necessity for other players to help you take advantage of the information, but even in Sova's case, having momentary wall hacks is pretty easy to take advantage of for your teammates as well. While his knife isn't nearly as good as people originally assumed, it still has some key uses as well. It can stop a lot of big ultimates like Ray's, Sova, and Jet ultimates, and in Ray's and Sova's case, it basically removes it completely. His knife can also stop some really important utilities such as Sova Owl Drone. If you hear Sova deploying his drone, chucking your knife at the nearest wall is a quick way to easily stop that. Overall, his knife is a great tool in theory, but it's just outclassed by other information gathering tools in practice. Perhaps as the meta develops, people will find more ways to use it, or people will learn how to take more advantage of it, but it currently doesn't provide a lot of usable information. But if you want to learn the best ways to use KO or any other agent you're trying to master, make sure to check out our website ProGuides.com, where our Radiant and Immortal level coaches are more than happy to teach you the secrets to excel in game. Each session is tailored to your specific needs, so whatever you need, we can help. If you're serious about climbing the rank ladder and improving at top speeds, definitely come visit us. Another part of his kit that people were really excited about were his flashes. KO easily has the most CSGO-like kit. His knife and ultimate are designed to stop Valorant abilities and force people to stick to raw gunplay. There are two key differences, however, between KO's flashes and those you'll see in Counter-Strike. First of all, it's the loud fuse sound. In CSGO, flashbangs only make sound if they hit a surface, which means that if you throw one well, it's impossible to dodge unless predicted. KO's flash has a fuse sound right before it pops, which makes it dodgeable at close distances. The other difference is flash distance. In CSGO, if a flash pops far away from a player looking at them, they'll barely be blinded at all, and even if they are, it's only for a few milliseconds. In Valorant, that's not the case though, and that makes the ideal playstyle completely different for KO. In CSGO, you want the player to be as close as possible to the popping flashbang, while making sure they have as little time to react as possible. 
But in Valorant, the ideal pop flash with KO's flashes requires you to flash at a distance, because this is the only way to remove the fuse sound from the equation. Luckily, you can still flash people for the full duration. Self pop flashing or pop flashing in tight areas doesn't really work for KO, as your opponents can hear the flash fuse even if they don't see it. But you can easily pop flash high above buildings or large walls for example. We made a short on this for Bind, which shows some flashes that KO can uniquely throw. However, it comes with a caveat that you can't use them for yourself, and they're mainly meant to help your teammates. So if your teammates don't know how to play with flashes, or if they aren't communicating with you, then you lose a huge portion of your flash's power. Honestly, his flashes are fine, especially in coordinated play, where they do have a lot of potential, but they're not nearly as strong as some people expected them to be. And they're certainly not self-pop flashing machines like Skies, which I think we can all agree is a little broken. What really hurts KO in this aspect is simply the versatility. Sky's flashes can do pretty much anything you want them to, for example, but KOs are super niche and can only be really optimally used as support for your teammates. Before we talk about the rest of his kit, let's quickly cover our question of the day. Today's question is, what do you think KO needs to become viable again? Personally, I think that his flash was a big selling point for a lot of the community because of how it functioned like in CSGO. But since it has the sound before the flash lands, a lot of the strengths that it could have had were erased and made to be obsolete. I think if they reduced the sound it made or made it faster, KO's supportive abilities could be exceptionally good and might give KO a small boost he needs to become competitive again. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. KO's molly is pretty good as it does its job pretty well. It's a strong piece of utility and it does great damage, but that's kind of where it ends. Unfortunately, his molly doesn't really fit KO's theme and his other abilities, so it's just a standalone tool. If we look at the other molly wielding agents, Brimstone, Viper, and Killjoy, they all have something in common. Their molly suits their kit. Viper can stack her molly and smoke to prevent pushes through a choke alone. Brimstone can essentially do the same. And Killjoy has mollies which she can activate from anywhere at any time, especially after the opponents run into her alarm bot. Simply said, their utility works well with each other, but KO's doesn't. What is the cue for KO to use a molly? Also, in which case is it good for KO to throw a molly after using one of his own abilities? A lot of times, using KO's molly seems like a shot in the dark, because you either throw a molly and it functions as a stall, or you potentially put yourself in danger trying to throw a molly when you should have had your gun out. That doesn't mean his utility is completely useless though. He can ask one of his smoker teammates to smoke for him, or he can play around a sage wall or close to a sentinel. But the fact that he needs his teammates to really use his kit makes it significantly harder to play with, and makes it dependent on teammates' skill as well, which is something you don't want to rely on usually. His ultimate was also a big talking point when his kit was leaked. People said it would essentially be a superior Phoenix ult, and how KO would kick Phoenix out of the meta. It's safe to say that Phoenix is currently out of the meta, but definitely not because KO took his job. His ult may be alright, but it's definitely nothing like Phoenix's. The Phoenix ult comparison stems from KO's ability to be revived after being killed, but I think people quickly realize that it's nothing similar. For one, reviving KO is a bit like defusing a bomb. You can do it if you're winning, but if not, then your teammate reviving you can be very easily spammed or singled out. On top of that, the only way KO dies of course, is if he took a fight with an opponent and lost it, meaning his body will always be in the open somewhere, or at least in line of sight of the opponents. That means if you get dropped, you're probably in no position to get revived, whereas for Phoenix, he at least returns to his original position. On defense, it's even more useless. On attack, when you're pushing, you'll generally always have a teammate or two with you, but on defense, pushing with your ultimate and doing so safely is even harder to do. For one, you need to ask at least two teammates to come with you to secure your revive, and even that's still difficult. Sure, you could use your ult for stalling like we talked about earlier in the video, but that also comes with a big target surrounding you, because each pulse gives away your position. Treating an ultimate like a stall is basically like using Raze's ult badly. The enemies run away and you end up with a Sabrosa ult. At the end of the day, KO seems to lack a lot of the tools that enable his seemingly powerful kit. He functions more like a support than an entry, and a lot of his abilities are weak when used alone. Perhaps as people learn to utilize him more, we might see more representation. But as it stands, KO is a bit underwhelming, and that's why people seem to have stopped using him. Anyways, that wraps up our video on why no one plays KO. If you enjoyed this, make sure to like and subscribe to keep up to date with our daily uploads. This has been your host Sergeant Frost, and I will see you all again in the next one.